Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I am grateful to be able to provide information to people. You know, that is uh, you know, because although you hear me say everybody should know the same things, everybody should have access to the same information, I recognize that everybody doesn't have access to the same information. I recognize everybody don't have the same experiences. You know, they didn't all fall from the same apple tree. Ain't my fault. But I recognize that. So, let's see if we can do you all a favor. There is no new information. There is nothing new under the sun. Absolutely nothing. The information is always going to be the same. It's the same as it was 20 years ago, as it is 30 years ago, as it is today. The information hasn't changed. Remember, the Federal Reserve Act has, amended, has been amended for the past 100 years. Do you not recall that the Federal Reserve Act is from 1913? It's been the same. The definition of any Federal Reserve agent has been you the whole time. Look, let's prove it to you. Hold on. This is the Federal Reserve Act that we're always talking about. We're going to skip past it because we don't need it to prove the point. We have to skip past it. We're going to go to the second page of this document. And we want y'all to see something. Some of y'all already know this, but there are a lot of new booties here that don't understand this document right here. This is President Roosevelt, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. This is called Presidential Proclamation 2039. Presidential Proclamation 2039. Go to the YouTube channel, not YouTube channel, the Sacon911.com. Then go to our current PDFs and then type in the New Deal. And pull up this document. It's on page 8. It says the use in this order, the term banking institution shall include all. Now the word all applies to everything down here. All Federal Reserve Banks, all national banks, all banks, all trust companies, all savings banks, all building and loan associations, all credit unions. All credit unions and other, other, other corporations, all other corporations, all partnerships, all associations, and all persons engaged in the business of banking, making loans, receiving deposits. Anybody ever gave you money? Well, you received a deposit. You ever lend your money to anyone? Then you made loans. Lord have mercy. Or transacting any other form of banking business. Anytime you deal with Federal Reserve notes, you're conducting banking business. Again, this is information all of you should know. It's obvious now. Oh, snap! Some of you are doing that right now. Because it's so obvious. But what's happening is we've got so many people trying to read for things. Ladies and gentlemen, do yourself a favor. Study. Did you understand that there are basic principles of statutory interpretation so that you're able to read statute? This is a presidential proclamation, but it's written by an attorney. Presidential Proclamation 2039. Now, when you read the beginning of it, pay attention. The statutes at large of the United States of America from the 60. Fifth Congress, Session 1, Chapter 106, 1917, page 418, 50 U.S. Code 4305, Suspension of Provisions Relating to Property Transfers, Vested Interests, Enforcement and Penalties, Credit Money, Money Credits Assignment. Shouldn't you guys be studying credit money? Well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, individuals should not be held liable for damages acting in pursuant to the statute later declared invalid. Citizens and public officials have the right to accept the law as written until it is repealed. Follow the law as written, people. As written. 
we put that information there for you all. Like I said, when Roosevelt did this, he continued what was done from 2017. 2017 continued what was done from, or excuse me, in 2017, 1917. And 1917 continued what was done at the very beginning. At the very beginning, 1913, which we talked about at the very beginning of the conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, the information I just showed you has been there the whole time. It has not gone anywhere. It's not escaped. You got credit money, you got money on deposit, and then you got the trust depository trust agreements. Hold on. Hold on. I think it's this paragraph right here. It says shall allow all such banking institutions, including you, to perform any and all such usual banking functions to direct, to require, permit the issuance of clearinghouse certificates. Permit the issuance of clearinghouse certificates. Do your research. The issuance of clearinghouse certificates. What are clearinghouse certificates? Do your research. Or other evidences of claim against the assets of banking institutions. And to authorize and direct the creation in such banking institution a special trust account. In your institution, you're a bank. Create your own special trust bank account. Do your research, people. For the receipt of new deposits, which shall be subject to withdrawal on demand without any restrictions. Create your own account, ladies and gentlemen. So what you don't have an ABA routing number? Create the application. Amend the wording. And start operating. And if they want to stop you, take them to court. Make it an issue. Put it on a public record. Make it public record. That's what they don't want. They don't want you guys putting this on a public record. They don't want you showing this on a public record. Now, look, some of you are some ignorant mother... Okay? No. Don't get offended by that because some of you are very ignorant. And I don't mean ignorant as you don't have knowledge. I mean ignorant in the way you talk and the way you act. You want to get up there and start yelling, shouting, and screaming, thinking that you can do what I do, thinking that what I do is yelling, shouting, and screaming. Ladies and gentlemen, you hear me talking to the chat GPT model. I'm talking to it as if I was talking to a judge. That's the same way I talk to judges. I don't debate with them. I don't argue with them. I give commands. Now, they'll talk to me and say that that's what they're doing. They're commanding me. They are the servant. How are they going to command me to do anything? They're the servant. They don't have my permission to command me to do anything, and that's what I'm telling them when I do that. Now, y'all can't go in there talking like me. Uh-uh. Because you don't know statutory interpretation, and you don't know how not to offend the court. So you can offend the judge all day long. Nobody cares. But you can't offend the court. You have to show respect for the court because why? That was what you signed up on as being part of the prosperity of the people of the United States. You see, for a long time people say, well, you're not part of the people. I don't want to be part of the people. I want to be part of the prosperity as evidence in the Bill of Rights. Why do I want to be part of the people? No, they wrote the Constitution for their posterity. For ourselves and our posterity. I don't need to be part of the people. But I do need to be part of that posterity. Because I ain't got to prove that the there. I just have to say I am. Somebody. Okay? I hope that some of you guys are getting the understanding. If you don't, I don't know what to tell you. Look. As I said in the two previous videos, I'm running out of time as far as being able to give you guys information that is clear, concise, to the point. I'm running out of time. There's going to come a time in the near future where I'm not going to be able to communicate. I'm going to lose the ability of communicating effectively with people. Hey, uh, I think I have a card right here. Let me see if I can find it real quick. I, I keep one in the desk, but I definitely keep one on my person, keep one in the car, and I keep one in my wallet. <laughs> my, well, my wallet is actually huge. But anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that document, that card, literally is a, it's somewhat like a medical alert card, but it literally tells them what the issues are. It tells them about the lack of being able to communicate. That was created seven months ago for just this time period. See, I've known this was coming. 
most let, let's see if you guys understand there are a lot of people who suffer from alzheimer's dementia and they don't even know that they got it they have to be diagnosed i've known that this was going to happen even before it started way back in 2001 and let's just for some of you who get it i'll say it for some of you who don't get it don't worry about it but there was a choosing that occurred in 2001 not my choice i did not have anything to do with the choice somebody decided to choose me and of course i accepted and he permitted me to know what was going to be my future now if you let, let me see if i can point it out to you hold on a second i'm going to tell you guys a short story those of you who don't want to hear it you can go ahead and you know stop watching because i'm not going to be saying nothing much after this so you're not going to miss anything this is uh, Acts the ninth chapter, verse 11. There's a young man, his name is Ananias. And Ananias is a prophet. And he is going to go meet this young man named Saul of Tarsus. Saul, who later becomes known as Paul. But as he's going to go meet Saul, he hears about Saul. Saul has just got finished standing by witnessing the murder and condoning the murder of Ananias's friend, Stephen. And now Ananias has got to go and talk to Paul, who is Saul at this time, this murderer, because he's the one who sat by approving of the murder, who murdered Ananias's good friend. And now he's got to go talk to him? Here's the conversation. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, and he said, here I am. The Lord said to him, get up, go to the street called Straight, and look for a man named Saul from Tarsus at the house of Judas. For look, he is praying, and in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might recover his sight. What had happened? Well, Paul had been chosen. It's a process. Anointed, in other words. And during that anointing, Paul lost his sight. Why? Because Paul, well, it's going to explain it in a minute. I don't have to go there. But notice what happens next. But Ananias answered, Lord, I've heard from many about this man about all the harm that he did to your holy ones in Jerusalem. And here he has the authority from the chief priests to arrest all those calling on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, because this man is a chosen vessel to me, to bear my name to the nations as well as to kings and to the sons of Israel. For I will show him plainly how many things he must suffer for my name. Paul was chosen and his choosing was in line with suffering. Now, this was not a basic, regular choosing, uh, like some people might think. This choosing happened to deal with the second chapter of Acts. So let's go to the second chapter of Acts so that we can cut to the chase. It says, while they were in this upper room, it says, now the day for the festival of the Pentecost was in progress. Let's go ahead and highlight it so you can see. The day for the festival of Pentecost was in progress, and they were all together in one place. Suddenly there was a noise from heaven, just like that of a rushing stiff breeze, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And tongues, like looking like literal tongues in a person's mouth, as if a fire became visible to them and were distributed. And one came to rest upon each one of them, and they all became filled, not chasing the Holy Ghost, filled with the Holy Spirit, and started to speak in different tongues, just like, or just as the Spirit enabled them to speak. Remember, they spoke in different tongues. See that right there? Tongues, languages. That's what the tongues represented, them being able to speak in different languages. How do we know? It says, 
at that time devout Jews from every nation, speaking different tongues, under the heavens were staying in Jerusalem because it was a festival. And they were there for that general assembly. And when this sound occurred, a crowd gathered outside that location and were bewildered because each one of them heard them speaking in tongues. No, in his own language, not some obscure language, blah, 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 blah. And people call that speaking in tongues. People, go back and read the scriptures. They didn't speak in no unknown language. It was a language that each one heard of them speaking in their own language. Indeed. They were uttering amazing things. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> they were utterly amazed and said, See here, all these who are speaking are Galileans, are they not? How is it then that each one of us is hearing his own native language, or own native tongue? Parthenians, Medes, Elamites, the inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, Casapertosia, Pontus, or the province of Asia, Pargwea, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the region of Libya, near Cyrene, sojourners of Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Christians, Arabians. We hear them speaking in our languages or our tongues the magnificent or amazing things of God. Yes, they were astonished and perplexed. So Peter stood up and he said, Hey, men of Judea and all you inhabitants of Jerusalem, let it be known to you, and listen carefully to my words. These people are in fact not drunk as you suppose that they are, for this is the third hour of the day. It's early in the morning. What's wrong with y'all? On the contrary, this is what was said through the prophet Joel. And in the last days, including these last days, God says, I will pour, not cast in front of them so they can go chase it, Oh, yeah, he caught the Holy Ghost. How are you going to catch something that's faster than the speed of light? Lord have mercy. He says he will pour as if pouring into a glass or into a vessel for which he says his servants are. He will pour out some of his spirit on every sort of flesh. And your sons and your daughters will prophesy. And your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. Even upon my men servants, he says, my male slaves and my female slaves, I will pour out some of my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. And I will get wonder in the heavens above, and signs on the earth beneath, blood and fire and clouds and thick smoke. The sun will turn into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and illustrious day of Jehovah comes. And everyone who calls on the name of Jehovah will be saved. Ladies and gentlemen, when that choosing took place, similar to that of Paul, Paul was told the things that he must suffer for God's name. I was told the things that I must suffer. I knew that I would be in jail three times and there will be one final time. That final time, significant time, will be violent. I'm okay with that. I did some stupid things in the past. That's not the reason why I'm suffering. But I'll, of course, I have to read what I told. So just because then God changed the heart of the heart and the heart of the heart, that doesn't mean that there are reasons why I have to suffer. Okay? So I understand and understand. I don't have a problem with it. Because it's what must be. The fact is, he knows that if I like that, and we talk, he is the power of God. I'm going to tell you guys something that I didn't tell people. I, I, in a group, I have told people before. He's allowed me to know that five of my family members would die. Now he knows how much I hate death. I've already told y'all that. Five will die. Don't know when, don't know how, because he didn't give me that. Just five will die. My mother was the first. Now, A, that was 2001 that I was told that. She didn't pass until 2017. See, there were no dates given to me, but I do know at least four more will pass. Now I have in my immediate, 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 there is still seven brothers and sisters. Immediate, not talking about stepbrothers and sisters. Immediate, seven brothers and sisters. So when they disowned me, they had no idea that that was a blessing because I don't have to be there to watch that. I don't have to be there to see that. I don't have to be there to know that. 
I know, I know, I know. Some of you, blah, 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 don't care. This is not your life, it's mine. This is what I must go through. Everything that he has told me, for instance, having a farm. I knew I was going to have a farm. I ain't never had no farm before. How dare you say, I'm going to have a farm. And then in 2008, I'm calling my best friend on the phone. I said, I'm getting up every morning, watering the animals, and feeding them every single morning at 6 a.m. and doing the same thing again at 4 p.m. I said, I got three acres of land, four sheep, a mountain dog, known as a Pyrenean mountain dog, Pyrenees, and my dog named Freedom, which is my Alaskan Eskimo, three llamas, and I realized I had a farm. I had no idea, didn't plan it, didn't even realize it at first until months after I was in my daily normal routine of going out watering, and I did refer to it as watering the animals, and feeding them their hay. That was my daily routine. I had a farm, but I was told I would have a farm, and it turned out, without me trying to make it that way, that I had a farm. I was told that I would end up in jail. The first time, 45 days, and that I would meet 45 people, no, 49 people, let me get that right, I always mix the 40s up. 45 days incarcerated in somebody's jail, and I would meet 49 people who did not know who Jehovah was. I know you're not going to believe this, but the people in the Atlanta jail that I was in, not Atlanta, that was, uh, that was later. The jail was North Carolina, Charlotte, Sheriff's Department, their jail, their county jail, North Carolina. Our pod of 60 people in the rec yard. 49 people stood there listening to me while I talked to them about the Bible and Jehovah. Didn't force them. I was just having a conversation and they decided they wanted to listen. 49 people who didn't know who Jehovah was. I couldn't believe it. What do you mean y'all don't know who Jehovah is? <laughs> all, Jehovah's, all these Jehovah's Witnesses around here, y'all don't know the name Jehovah? And quite literally they didn't. So I spent my time in those two and a half weeks I was at that facility talking to them about Jehovah. Until I spoke with the last person whose mother and daughter, uh, whose wife and daughter were Jehovah's Witnesses. It's just he never listened to them. And he sat and talked to me for an hour. And I told him, I didn't talk to everybody here. You're the only person I hadn't talked to, and I couldn't figure out why I'm still here. And that was the 45th day. That's why I couldn't figure out why am I still here. Because I was told 45 days, and he was the 49th person. I said, I was trying to figure it out last night because. It's only 48 people, and there's nobody else coming in. And I realized that you're the only person I hadn't spoke to. And we sat down, and we talked for an hour. Nobody disturbed us. Nobody interrupted us. Nobody came over and asked me any questions, which is normal when I'm in an environment like that. People are always coming and asking me questions about their case or about something else or about the Bible. I, um, I go through inside a jail facility the same thing I go through out here. And I'm, anybody who's ever been around me in there, they know. That everybody's always coming to me and asking me questions about the law or about the Bible or about something. And so I speak to him. And five minutes after we close the book, I say to him, you see how nobody came around and interfered with this conversation the whole time we've talked? He says, yeah. I said, it always happens like that. Next thing you know, they said, hey, roll your stuff up. You're out of here. 45 people, 49 days or 49 people. See, I always mix it up. 49 people, 45 days. I was released on the 45th day, exactly as I wrote down what I was told. I literally wrote that down and went back, and none of my property was disturbed. None of my cars were broken into. None of my homes were broken into. There was no problem with the rent or nothing. Didn't have to worry about nothing. Everything continued as it was when I got back. So, ladies and gentlemen, I have faith in the God that I serve, not because somebody gave me faith in him, but because he's proven to be my friend since I was three years old. Now, of course, prior to that, but at that point when I learned his name at the age of three, my God has been my friend ever since. And I appreciate that. Then this last two times, the Puerto Rico thing, you guys, those of you who were around before Puerto Rico, you guys heard me tell you that that was going to happen. That's why I went home when they told me the police are at your home. 
That's why I ruined the engine on both. Well, I had already ruined the engine on one car earlier today. The engine froze up on me, seized up on me. I, it was a used car that I bought in Puerto Rico. And then the other one was a Mitsubishi Montero. I'm breaking my neck to get back home, and I'm overheating. And I blew that engine. Overheating, trying to get home. is when I became aware of the pandemic. And like I said, this wasn't the pandemic I saw. This was a so-called pandemic, but this wasn't it. Became aware of the pandemic, became aware of the Israel thing. And the Israel thing where there's going to be mention of a dirty bomb. Didn't know the extent of it because that was the end of the understanding or uh, some people would call it a vision, but it wasn't a vision because I cannot begin to explain to you how I was there, how I saw it. Just as much as I could smell the air, I defined the air, I defined, I defined what it smelled like. I wrote all of this down. This is not something, uh, this was 1,500 pages of documents, ladies and gentlemen, I don't kid you. 1,500 pages of writing of all the things that I was told was going to happen. I can't tell you all of that stuff because it wasn't meant for me to tell you. But I can tell you what I told you just now. So when I tell you I've already been aware of what's about to happen to me. And yes, it's been creeping up and I feel it. I can hear it coming in the air. Well, let me tell you. I see it. And... It bothers me a little bit because there are so many things I want to complete. I'm going to get to complete a lot of things, but I don't know because it wasn't clear as if it was going to be after or before. I don't know. I don't know how much more time we have. But I do know that it is necessary for me to get this information out to you guys. I also still have to be careful because I can't throw everything at you. Can't give you all the pieces of the puzzle that I know. Because I don't know everything, but I know everything, and that's all that I know. Anyway, I can't give you all the pieces of the puzzle, but I can give you the pieces necessary for you to accomplish something. Why? Because you might as well be able to accomplish something before all of this comes to an end. Before the great fear-inspiring day of Jehovah, as the scriptures say. I didn't say it. Hold on now. I, I hope you all understand I didn't say it. It lets you know before the great and illustrious day of Jehovah comes, okay, you might as well have an opportunity of achieving some sort of success. So go back, listen to the series on empowerment. We're going to continue that series next week, but listen to that series. Now look, I'm about to go take my sleeping pill. I'm going to take two of them because I really do need to get some sleep. And I'm about to go to sleep. I'm not answering nobody's door. I'm not being bothered with nobody. I'm, these are natural sleeping pills, so I ain't overdosing. But I'm about to go and get me some rest because I just did a consult with somebody. He has had three lawyers handling his case. And he had one lawyer told him, well, you, you barred, you can't do this no more, and you can't do that. And I said, he's a liar. And I used the chat GPT models to prove that he was a liar, that the attorney had lied to him. The attorney hadn't actually told an all-out flat-faced lie. The attorney told him the truth, but what he didn't do is give him the caveat as to why. And so I gave him the caveat. I said, I just heard your case today. You just explained to me what was going on today. And because you just explained what was going on today, I was able to provide you an answer, an answer your attorneys didn't even provide you that they should have provided you. I said, so now you get to go and take this back to your attorney since he wants you to pay him and you get to explain to him why you are not going to be paying him. Do your job, homie, and then you'll get paid because that's our agreement, but ain't nowhere in the world I'm going to pay you for not doing your job. You must be out of your mind. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not the greatest. I just know what I know. And what I know, all of these attorneys should know. But I've told you too many times about attorneys that come to me and tell me how they want me to work for their law firm because they don't think like me. That's not my fault. Hey, I got to go. Y'all take care of yourselves, okay? Goodbye.